Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you eight essential techniques to take your blues playing to the next level. So let's start with a finger roll, and in the solo I kicked off with a lick like this. Now I won't talk too much about theory here, but just to say we're in the key of C major, and most of what we're playing is going to be based around the C minor pentatonic shape here at the 8th fret, so just think about how everything relates to that. But what is a finger roll? Well we need a finger roll when we have to play two strings at the same fret directly after each other like this. You see there, I'm playing this now on the B string at the 8th fret with my first finger and then rolling it to play the same fret on the high E string but at the same time I'm also muting off that B string so I'm not letting them ring out together. It's not that, it's two distinct notes. You see, and then once we've played the high E we can roll back to the B and mute that high E with the underside of the finger. Now this is really useful in blues because we often play around the chords and you see these two notes come directly from that C chord so they work really well in our licks together. Now most people will find going from the B up to the high E like that fairly straightforward because the finger's already in position but going from the B down to the G is slightly trickier and we kind of need to anticipate it by playing the B string kind of just on a, a lower part of the finger and then letting that finger roll. You see I'm angling the finger in as well. I'm not coming at it straight from there, but angling across and coming B to G. And I can roll between those two strings. And that's really useful licks like that, where I'm playing the B string and then rolling to the G, give it a little push up and then resolving back down to the root. On to technique number two, and let's talk about bending. Now most people already know how to bend, but to be honest, a lot of people don't really know what notes they're aiming for. Now there's actually four different bends within this lick. All of which you really need to know. Played without any bends, it's just down the blues scale. Like that. But you see those bends really bring it to life. So we're starting off aiming for this note here this B flat of the 15th fret on the G string, but we're bending to it from the 12th fret. So this bend goes up the equivalent of three frets known as a one and a half step bend. It's pretty hard and will require some effort, but once you've got this, everything else is gonna seem a bit easier. Hard to get perfectly in tune, but you do wanna be as in tune as possible. So that's our first bend, the one and a half step. Then coming down, this is a full step bend at the 10th fret, but aiming to get to this note at the 12th fret. Now this is kind of your bread and butter bend that you're gonna be doing all the time, so you wanna get really good at this. So, so far we've got like that. Then staying at the 10th fret, but this time just making a half step bend to get to this blue note at one fret high. So here the difference before we were playing a full step bend, and then this time the half step bend is much darker, much bluesier sounding. So I'm just coming down and pulling off that one and then ending with this extra bend here at the eighth fret on the G string. I'm just pushing this one up slightly sharp. This is what we call a quarter step bend. Really, it's a microtonal bend. We're not aiming for another note. And it's just because this note here, the minor third is quite grating against that C major chord. So just by coming slightly sharp on it, it just makes it slightly more palatable to the ear. So all together we get one and a half step, full bend, half bend, quarter bend, and resolve to the root. On 
on to number three and let's talk about grace notes. So a grace note is a note which doesn't have any time value in its own right. It's just there to lead into another note, but they're actually really important for adding flavor, particularly in blues. So what you saw me doing there was coming to this blue note of the 11th fret and then just glancing off it before coming into the 10th fret. So the 11th fret is my grace note and the 10th fret is really my target note. So it's just a really quick slide down like that. Now if I play that same lick, Without the grace notes, it's pretty bland, but with them in, it's a lot more bluesy. It's subtle, but it adds a lot to your playing. On to number four, and let's look at the sting. Now, a sting is pretty similar to a grace note in a way, but the difference is we're always coming from another note rather than being the first note in the sequence. So what I'm doing there is starting on this 10th fret, and then sliding up to the 11th, the blue note there, and then quickly back again. So it's like I'm stinging on that note. It's a really cool technique. Now in the solo, I kind of got a repeating pattern going. And try to speed up kind of in free time, just to give you a chance to practice that motion and really get that embedded into your playing. Then number five, tremolo strumming. And all I'm doing there is taking these two notes, G and B flat, and playing them over the C chord, which really brings out that dominant seventh flavor, and basically strumming them as fast as I can while staying in time with the music. Now, a few tips here. I like to bring the pick back towards the bridge. The strings are a bit tighter here, so it helps you control the strumming. Also, first finger across the other strings. It's very easy to get other things ringing out, so a bit of muting helps there. And then sliding in. Just brings a bit of variation in when we're just playing the same notes over and over again. On to number six, and let's look at double stop bends or bending two strings together. So this isn't as tricky as it looks, and it's one of those things that really makes it look like you know what you're doing. So coming here to the 10th fret, and I'm gonna bar the G and B strings together, but then use my other fingers behind here just to add some extra strength to this bend. And I can basically make a half step bend with those two notes. Like that up and down, and then at the eighth fret with the first finger. Again, I'm using this middle finger on top of that just to give it a bit of extra strength at times. Can make a quarter step bend. So we're just pushing those slightly sharp. That kind of a sound. Number seven is going to be hybrid picking, where we use both the pick and our fingers at the same time. Now in blues we most commonly see this when we play in six like that, so here we want to play the G string and the high E string together. Now we could just strum across that, but it's not very delicate with all this muting, raking sound going on with the B string. So we're going to play the G string with the pick and the high E with the middle finger on the picking hand. Now there's a common pattern with six where we play G and the slide and then high E, G, slide, high E, G, slide, high E. So I'm using that to work up. And then on the come down, I'm picking those notes simultaneously on the G and high E strings together like that. Always using my third finger for the high E. And lastly, number eight, the upstroke rake. Now the important thing with this, we always start with a target note in mind. So here our target note is this C of the 10th fret on the D string, and then we need three strings above that that we can rake across. So I'm raking across whilst muting the high E, B, and G strings. 
but we don't want to just pull across them suddenly like that. There's a timing to it and we want a triplet rhythm. One, two, three, target. One, two, three, target. Like that. And in order to get that timing, you really need to bring the pick a bit more kind of um, face onto the guitar. If you're completely horizontal like that, the pick just sticks in the strings. So bring your hand so the pick is facing downwards a bit, and then you can rake across without it getting stuck in the strings. So just before that, I was playing a bend up, and then my rake down to the target note. So bend, rake, target. And then again, I move my target note to this G on the A string. So this time my three strings above are gonna be the B, G, and D strings. And then again, using those same strings to target that F down, ending with that. 